Hi, my name is Eric Dale, and I play the character of Trunks in Dragon Ball Z, among other things. Hello. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm Colleen Clinkenbeard, and I play uh, Gohan and Android 18 in uh, Kai and On, and I play Mai and uh, Princess Snake and Zanya in the rest of the universe. Hey everybody, I'm Mike McFarland. I play Master Roshi. Hell yeah! yeah. <laughs> I play Najirobi, and I play uh, Glass's boyfriend of Gohan from Kala Glass. And I play Android 8, and I play a bunch of guys to go, Those kind of guys. Mike also directed Dragon Ball. I did. I forgot about that. I did direct Dragon Ball with no letter after it, just Ball. <laughs> I'm uh, Christopher Sabat, I'm the voice of Vegeta and Piccolo and Yamcha and whatever else they threw me on because they didn't have enough actors back then. Uh, and I was the voice director for Dragon Ball Z and I'm the producer on Dragon Ball Super. I do a lot of casting on it, some directing, but mostly that's being heralded by Raleigh Pickens these days. Woo! Oh, wow. Yay! Look, I'm trying to give the guy some credit now, so Raleigh Pickens. He was the unsung hero for a long time. He is. He, just, he like has the most unfortunate name for somebody who's like kind of really into electronic music and into like German culture. Oh, Rolling Don Pickens. He, he should be. He should be a NASCAR driver. Yeah. Rolling Don Pickens. The taste just can't be beat. All right. You uh, eat Rolling? Yeah. You sing it. You sing it. You should move on. You know. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I want to throw this. Okay, so who Someone has a question? Really so Colleen can kind of all throw this. You're part. nearby. <laughs> I get the easy one. All right. He'll <laughs> he'll make his way back. All right. Um, I have a question for Chris. A yeah. Like crossover question. <laughs> <laughs> so, assuming his port could last the whole time, how well do you think All Might would have done in the Chamber of Power? I'll take this. Uh, not long. He's not very strong and doesn't have any friends. I could I could answer that, but I mean, oh, Eric did a fine job. Uh, he's, he has limited power, so who knows? That's the only that's, that's his thing. Like any when anyone asks him, if All Might can beat someone else or not, I usually end up saying something like, "Well, it, he does have a mortal injury, so it." There comes a certain point at which he probably would not fare very well. Well, they have to handicap him somehow. That's true. So his name's kind of a misnomer. He should be like, most kind of Mike. <laughs> all so Mike. All Mike. All Mike. Asterisk. Yeah. <laughs> Mike may not be available all times in all areas. <laughs> Throw it. Oh my gosh, catch it. Uh -huh. <laughs> I had a question for Chris. Do you ever mess with Eric about like the father son thing you guys have with DBZ? I'll take this. <laughs> yes, he, he 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 does. Mainly by ordering me around in my own home, and that's not fair. <laughs> and then I have to sleep on the couch while he takes my wife. <laughs> Again, Eric did a wonderful job answering that question. This is kind of for all of you. Uh, what kind of advice do you have for up and coming voice actors Woo! and uh, people who just kind of want to get into the uh, this, that kind of uh, career? Eric. Eric should take that. I'll take this. <laughs> <clears throat> Don't. <laughs> uh, I, I love I love giving advice to people who are going to take work away from me. <laughs> My advice is just to get involved in the production industry. Mm. And that's kind of how a lot of us ended up in this in the first place. We were all able to do so many other things. Eric is a writer and he's a director, and Mike is a writer and a comedian and a singer and uh, director. Like, all of us have multiple talents. Colleen does some other things. I'm not sure what she does. <laughs> no. Multiple, multiple. No, Colleen can't. 
she came from a theater background, and she works in production. She like all of us have to do a lot of other things. None of us can really exist like solely as voice actors. There's very few of us, uh, especially in Texas, California. Maybe it's a different story. But, okay. But my advice is just to get involved in all things production. Volunteer to be a production assistant on a film. They've got to be shooting some films here. Or uh, you really kind of have to start at the bottom and get yourself as uh, networked as possible without being annoying. Just try to be helpful to as many people as possible because eventually you're going to have somebody that you know that ends up having to need some uh, voiceover on a film or a show or something. And then if you just keep practicing your skills at home, you'll be very quick to be the one to jump in and go, I, I can help you with that. I yeah. have a home recording set up, or I know how to do that. I can jump in, and then your skill set will be already fairly honed. You won't feel nervous about it, and that's kind of where you have to be ready to get your first start. Um, that's that's my advice. And then I, I know uh, I also come from a theater background, like Colleen does. Uh, Eric, you do too, don't you? Yep. Okay. Uh, so the training for that, I think, is training for all acting. Well, people are like, yeah, but I just want to do voice acting. Well, the key word is there is, is acting. So go through acting classes, uh, get up on the boards, have a script in hand. Uh, if you can get through the level of that sort of uh, nervousness and that sort of responsibility and that sort of everything like that, that's going to help you with all other aspects of acting. Also, I highly suggest improvisation because it makes you make quick decisions on the spot uh, and you also have to sometimes come up with your own dialogue. We don't tend to do that. We tend to have scripts and things like that, but sometimes the lines don't quite fit or whatever. So if you've been in character for a long time and a line doesn't quite fit, you know how your character would find some other way to say this to make it fit better. Yeah. yeah. And once you've gotten kind of your feet in all of those puddles, <laughs> Uh, voice acting workshops are a really good idea, um, and most cities have them somewhere. Uh, and they're not only good for training grounds, but usually the people who are running them are people who uh, have some kind of tie within the industry, if you find a good one. Uh, and then if they if they really think that you're doing a good job, they would know what to do to get you to, to move on to the next level. So uh, at least in Texas, voice acting workshops are a good idea. Eric already answered all the questions. And then approach Eric Vale once you feel like you're ready. <laughs> I will help you. He's very approachable. <laughs> oh! I just discovered the flaw in this system. Yeah.
whoever has the box has to yell the word throwing <laughs> before they throw it. So we can avoid the injuries. Sure. Right. Safety first. Okay. Hi guys, you the box. I have a funny question. Um, whenever you guys get like spam calls or something, do you like prank them like doing voices of characters you do or just improvise? I think Eric has a recording. Monica does. Monica Real will pretend to be a kid who has to go get her mom. <laughs> <laughs> My mom's not here right now. <laughs> she, also, she also does horrible things like, um, I wouldn't get Grandpa, but he's in the tub and he's not saying anything. <laughs> I used to like to mess with people, but actually just kind of annoys me at this point because I'm just getting frustrated with all the robocalls. I found an app called RoboKiller for the iPhone, and it not only allows you to it filters spam phone calls, it will allow you to record your pre-recorded uh, messages to mess with them as well. The, I can play you one that just recorded yesterday. Unfortunately, it was a real person that really needed to reach me about a credit card transaction. <laughs> actually records it for you so you can enjoy the playback later. So it gets to actually do all the work of pranking them for you, and it goes like this. Columbus? Peter Columbus? I, I think that's his name. He yeah, Lord. Lord. 
He's got a lot of credits, actually. Look him up on IMDb. Those guys, Vancouver is like a huge hub of voice acting yeah, and they do, right. film talent. So those guys were all veterans before we even showed up. Vancouver's the Canadian Hollywood. Yeah. Rolling. Rolling it. Yeah. Um, I'll address this for you, man. Like, we all know you're double duty and all the hell with the voiceover, though. But do you ever wake up in the middle of the night, have a nightmare, see that Scott McNeil might show up on his Harley from hell and try to take Bigelow back? At this point, I would probably give it to him, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd be happy to see Scott McNeil. I haven't seen that dude in a long time. He's awesome. If, if there's like one person I would give the role to, I would give it to Scotty. Scott's a good dude. All right, so I'm going to ask everyone not to boo me when I ask this question. Um, but <laughs> That's a great way to start. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to get friends. But um, I'm sure you've heard that Superman beat Goku, and everybody's super sore about it. Would Vegeta exploit the kryptonite weakness um, in order to beat Superman, or would he just, like Goku, continue pounding on a steel wall until he died? Oh, dude, Vegeta would take any opportunity he could uh, to beat somebody. So that meant like wearing an entire outfit of kryptonite and vomit, like eating kryptonite. And taking vomit. <laughs> he would do that, uh, and he, unlike he, unlike Goku, wouldn't probably go. Hey, this sounds. Like, you know what? We should get you to power up as much as possible and fly him to like the as close to the sun as human as possible. Uh, so I, I think Vegeta would have a good chance. He would be ruthless. Superman's kind of nice, so we'll see. No one booed you, actually. See? Someone even class. Oh. It's awesome. Couple questions. So, um, what's your favorite video game you've ever played? Huh. <laughs> I haven't played video games since PS2, so Champions of Nora and Baldur's Gate. Yeah. <laughs> What's a video game? Pong. 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 Eric's really in touch. Oh god. What's that? Oh. Oh. I don't know if we can take our relationship to that level. It said pony? Am I just too attractive for you, Colleen? <laughs> Uh, Breath of the Wild was amazing recently, uh, Snap. and also uh, probably Red Dead Redemption is still one of my favorite games of all time. Yeah. I love riding around the forest, picking flowers and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and shooting people. Uh, I don't know, so I'm going to say Gorf. Gorf. Yeah, which shows my age. Gorf. So they combined like Space Invaders and Galaxian and five other games into one game. And it was one of the first games that could talk, so as you walk by the arcade, uh, it would go insert coin. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. well, now I have to. <laughs> it told me to. Okay, in, so all, in all honesty, I'm like neck deep right now in uh, uh, Tom Clancy's uh, what? Uh, what not wild, not Wildlands. I just finished that one, but uh, it's the uh, Rogue. The Wild Thornberrys. Rainbow Six. Rainbow Six. Yes. The other thing I was thinking. My favorite one to be in was Borderlands. So, I fully approve of that question. Okay, so for my second question, um, if you ever heard or played Tekken, what's your favorite Tekken character? Oh, man. That one was really easy to button mash. Uh, I played Paul Phoenix in Street Fighter Cross Tekken, so I can cheat and say, me? <laughs> uh, but I like playing as Nina Williams, because I like to see uh, uh, a woman kick a dude's butt left and right. I think it's great. Over and over again. I never got into Tekken. Don't kill me. <laughs> yeah, I have no opinion. Pass. Passing. Oh, this thing's got a microphone. <laughs> this is like a weird team building exercise. It kind of is. Somebody call. So, I have a question that I think every Dragon Ball fan has been wanting to know for decades. Um, since I know that we got the voice actor of Vegeta and the voice actor of Trunks, how did Vegeta explain to Trunks about the birds and the bees? <laughs> what birds and bees? <laughs> you think you think Vegeta would do that? Yeah. <laughs> he 
say something like, I mean, it's about just father, just hit her, take her. <laughs> if Trump's do anything, mine would be far less frustrated right now. <laughs> Shows and things you've been part of. That happened to me with Mike. 
Uh, I auditioned for One Piece, and I auditioned for Robin and Nami, because I thought those were my uh, best shots at being in the show. And then Mike was like, okay, but can you read for a Luffy? <laughs> and that immediately made me nervous, as I had not been in the, in the audition before. I had heard her do a uh, spunky boy voice in some other series. Beat the Vandal Busters. Yeah. The only time I had done it before. Yeah, it was Beat the Vandal Busters. Yeah. And so I heard her do that, and I was like, but I heard that, so please do that for this character, and let me hear that take. And it worked out. I'm so excited. And then she hates me forever. I love you forever for that. Ruined everything. I think My voice, but... <laughs> I think probably Fruits Basket, I was really, I was really sure I was going to get the voice of Hattori. And then Justin goes, I've got a different character in mind for you. <laughs> playing a guy named Ayame, which is the opposite of any character I've ever played in that show. Ayame. Ayame. <laughs> so I was like, hey, I want a tough guy who can shoot fire out of his hands. I'm like, how about a crossdresser who wants to make out with boys? I'm like, I'm like, okay. <laughs> if you want to get real close to real life. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's too close to the chest. I'm hardline about it. I don't I don't put myself into that into my work that deeply. Uh, I uh, I audition and leave. Yeah. And, it, and and then I do the character and go. I, I I learned a long time ago that if, if I spend time thinking about that, I'll just go nuts and I'll just dwell on it. So I just, I kind of check out as much as I can. That is a really good question for you, actually, because I, you are so much that way. Is there any project that you go in and you're like, I'm actually too excited about this, I need to stop being Okay, you know, it happened one time, but this is where I learned it. I'll tell you the story where I learned it. Okay, so who's, uh, who's seen uh, Animal House, right? That's not enough people, but okay. Uh, so there's this actor, he was uh, starting Animal House, he was in the West Wing, his name's Tim Matheson, right? And he's one of my favorite actors, I love him. Uh, he, he was directing a movie, and this was at the beginning of my career, so I, I was in my late 20s, and I got an audition for him. He was directing this movie, and it was in Houston. So, I got my lines ready, memorized, drove down to Houston, it's a five hour drive, and memorized my lines the whole time, was totally off book, walked into the room, there's a row of 15 people and Tim Matheson, and I blanked, because I wanted it so bad. I was like, my desire was bigger than my work ethic. And so I walked in, I'm like, all right, Oh crap, and forgot everything. I had to grab script pages off of the table to read my lines because I couldn't remember any of them. I did two takes of the audition reading with somebody behind the table, and at the end of it, I swear, Tim Madison, like the second read ends and it's just like this for a second. And Tim Madison gets up, walks around the table, comes over to me, and goes, you're a really good actor. Oh, that's nice. And excused me from the room. Oh. And after that, I'm like, wow, I gotta check out if I'm gonna do this for the rest of my life. Because <laughs> that crushed me. And I went home and I cried in the car. I didn't cry in the car. You cried in the car. <laughs> it cried a little bit. Was that before or after that movie that you and I shot together in? Waco. Uh, it was after. It okay. was after. But it was uh, not long after. I mean, like within a year of that. That's, that's where you and I have, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've known you longer than anybody. Because mm -hmm. uh, I was in 96. Back in 96. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! I do have a funny story about auditioning for a Budweiser commercial one time. It was a on camera thing. And they brought people in in groups to kind of improv the scene because they were just looking for. People hanging out in the background or something like that. Just people just doing their thing. And so they go, all right, go. And I was in a group of a few people and I go, hey, guys, this is awesome. Pass me another Guinness. And, um, <laughs> and at the end, the casting director goes, well, um, you just auditioned for a Budweiser commercial and you just dropped the Guinness uh, name. He goes, well, good luck to you. And I still booked it. <laughs> Chris has got to tell his Garth Brooks story. Oh my gosh. It's okay. my favorite. So, 
I, I was on a commercial one time with Garth Brooks. And uh, please, if, if you put this on the internet, don't tag him or anything like that. Because he is a really nice guy. But So for some reason, they cast me in this, uh, it was this Garth commercial that had starring Garth Brooks about this box set that was coming to Walmart a billion years ago. Like, I don't even remember when it was. It was over Christmas time. So I went out to shoot this commercial. And my only line was I literally had to walk up to the house. <laughs> and, uh, I had to walk up to the house and I had to be saying something to myself. So I was going up to the house and I had to like say something to this guy. I'm like, dude, check it, check it out. I got Garth. And like it sounds like a, a venereal disease or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> and that was it. So um, and so I'm supposed to be bringing my friend, and I'm supposed to be bringing Garth Brooks with me. So they they start, they, you know, they call action. And God, it's been a long time to even thought about this story. And I'm running up with Garth Brooks next to me, and like, man, you're gonna love my friend's house. It's like, this all stuff is not ever gonna be heard. It's supposed to be just two people talking to each other as they're running up towards someone's house. And I'm like, man, you love my friend's house. He's got a bunch of video games, like every system. He's got a PS4. It's like, and they finish that take, and he goes, oh, uh, maybe you could, uh, you know, next time, you know, talk about my albums and stuff. And I go, I didn't know any of his albums. So, <laughs> so it's like, uh, okay. And so the next take, I'm just like, Man, you could love this guy. He's got all of your album, and the, he's got the one with you wearing the hat on it, and the, <laughs> and the one where you're like a rock star and stuff. And uh, like, I just can't remember. Like, I just don't know all of them, but he's got all of them. You're really gonna like that guy. <laughs> Needless to say, we didn't get along that well. Uh, <laughs> but because it was Garth Brooks, they were like everyone from Walmart. The whole client was there, and they were just gonna do anything they wanted to do. And they're like. Don't you think uh, maybe we should uh, turn the camera around and get a tight close up on my face? And they go, but Garth, that would, I mean, we'd have to turn the entire set around. That would take like, that'll take an extra day for us to, to do what you're asking. It's like, I mean, don't you think that'd be a good idea? And so <laughs> we had to stay an extra day and a half for the set day and a half. And you know what's crazy? They ended up like, we we're all on the set. I just had to stand there and they put that camera on his face. And believe it or not, all of us fell in love with Garth Brooks. Like he has this, he had this magical stare, and the more you stared at it, the more you were just drawn into Garth Brooks. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Like I was like, that is a handsome cowboy right there. <laughs> and you would believe that people love Garth Brooks, probably still do. And they were like, people hiding up in trees, watching the like they were climbing up trees. They were watching. very happy about that close up. Yeah, yeah. I and he was he was very nice. <coughs> To women and children, not necessarily to anyone else, really. But I always, I just felt like he was like a robot that was programmed to be nice to women and children. <laughs> and he loved to ask women, "So when are you going to have babies?" <laughs> like, what? Well, and that's why I was like, "What?" Well, because darling, when are you going to have babies? Goes, no, I'm in my fifties. I'm not going to be having babies. Like, oh come on, you got to have some babies. Oh <laughs> lord. <laughs> was like, that's interesting to me. Very very nice. I still think he's a robot. <laughs> Oh, and apparently you're not supposed to mention Chris Gaines around him. <laughs> uh, Chris Gaines was his alter ego, where at one point he decided, I'm not going to be a country western star, I'm going to be a rock musician. Yeah, did you mention it? I only really did when I was running up at one time. <laughs> and then the producer was very quick to go, you don't mention the Chris Gaines in front of Garth. And I'm like, sorry, I'm going to go do my thing. Uh, Chris, at our next... I would like to do a dramatic reading of the liner notes from Chris Gaines' album. Oh, God, yes. <laughs> Alright, more questions. Sorry. Hi there. Hi. So I obviously love your characters, but I would like to know a little bit more about you all. Um, what is the weirdest fan encounter you've had? Because I'm sure you've had a lot. <laughs> They're all so normal, though. <laughs> like, they, once you've done it so long, there's yeah, no right. sort of the, the, the weirdness of the encounters get less and less and less. Yeah, uh, which time that I signed a condom do you want to talk about? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is there one brand that seems to be more prevalent than the others? Um, you know what? It's actually usually the organic, like, like the, the ones that are not big brands. I see. It's interesting. Do I am I like a crunchy person? You only I'm crunchy granola hippie. You only bring me the organic condoms. <laughs> well, if you're gonna get an autograph or something, you're not gonna waste all your money on the condom. You want to get the cheapest condom. <laughs> <laughs> I've had people 
show up at my house delivering pizza. That's weird. Call me out for it. That was weird. Uh, I've had people try to chase my wife down at a convention, and they were tackled by security. <laughs> she was tackled by security. Not my wife. This other woman who was like 19 years old, about this tall. That was brutal to watch. She just bolted after my wife. She asked the guy, is that Trunks' wife? As <laughs> my wife's walking away, and he goes, yeah, and she just <laughs> just takes off, and these dudes climbed over tables and just and tackled her like football players, and she cried, and my wife was confused. <laughs> I, have a, I have a super creepy one, actually. Uh, this this was, wasn't at a convention, but I I got a call one time from uh, somebody, and they were like, "Hey, this is Jennifer Jennifer Reed from high school." I was like, "Oh, hey," because I'm horrible. Like I I do not remember anyone's name at all, and I'm and I'm so embarrassed about that that I'll just like greet it pretty much anything. And this one, she's like, "Hey, I'm in town. I have a convention. We should we should get a drink or something like that." I'm like, "Well, I yeah, I guess I could do that." Um, Jennifer Reed, huh? That, God, it's been so long. Wow. But, you know, I've got a few minutes. Like, we could, we could uh, catch up or something like that. Yeah, let's meet somewhere. That'd be great. And so a few hours pass, and I'm about ready to go, and I get a call from a friend of mine who works as a, a stylist at Nordstrom. And she goes, hey, there is somebody here getting styled for uh, clothing. And she said, I've got a date tonight with the Dragon Ball Z voice actor. And she was like, I, I feel like, she goes, I asked, she goes, it was Chris, and uh, she thought, I thought you might want to know that. Uh, are you going on a date tonight with somebody? I go, all right, this makes perfect sense. So I, you know, I still went, though, because then, like, <laughs> then it was more interesting. I'm like, I want to see this person who, like, I want to figure out how this all went down. So I show up, and sure enough, she walks in the door. And I have no clue. I've never seen this person in my freaking life. So I'm like, so how are you doing? How's high school? Like, what classes do we have together? And she's like, um, you know, science or whatever. I'm like, man, do you remember that street? It was the street that went in front of our high school. I can't remember. She couldn't answer anything. I'm like, look, I know 100% that you did not go to my high school. What the heck is this all about? And she goes, okay, I, I work for the DMV, and I... I I got your information out of the the, 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 the DMV. I'm like, all right, well, that's super. Illegal. Let's finish these drinks real fast, and I'm gonna be on my way, very much. Because I have to be polite at that point, because she knows all my information. That she's, uh, you just gave them a handbook of how to go out on a date with you. Yeah. First thing, I'm gonna get a job at the DMV. <laughs> just study this high school. Oh, that was creepy though. The cube we've lost. He died. Can <laughs> <laughs> I, I just talk about like this? Yeah. 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 I, I think it's on. Um, first random question. I must look at him. Whoever was playing that clip of Dio Brando saying the world, I love you for it. <laughs> Secondly, um, just uh, adding on to the whole voice acting thing, what makes you feel good. Obviously, uh, of course, I've been to a couple times with Vic, and of course he hates it, of course. He not hates it, well, I hate the character, but whenever someone comes and says, Hey, can you do Roy? And so like, CAN YOU DO IT? And stuff like that, he's like, no, because it really has my voice, and stuff like that. Is there a line whether if you get, whether it be just annoyed, or like, you don't want to do it because it's not from the show, anyone that you get asked all the time, that's just like, do I have to? No, not really. I'm actually just a professional. I'll just do whatever. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding. Say I ate over 9,000. Uh, <laughs>
typical wheelhouse. Yeah. That, and Mike McFarland's to thank for that, and Mike McFarland gets all the credit for putting Beck on a voice that just absolutely breaks his throat. He wanted to do it. <laughs> he did want to do it. He probably could do it again. Yes. Through you. Last question! I guess this goes with uh, what we were just talking about. Hopefully you don't get annoyed me asking this. I know it's the Dragon Ball Z pound, but could we hear some lines from your One Piece characters? <laughs> I'm Zora, I like to take naps and I get drunk. Luffy! <laughs> I'm Sanji, cooking. <laughs> Stupid straw hat, I'll kill it! I'm gonna be king of the sands! <laughs> This video is sponsored by the Crazy Kings of Toys. Check them out for all your toy needs and find out why they are so crazy. Find them at eBay, Bricklink, and Facebook. Links are in the description. For more Toxic Pop, visit our website at toxicpop1.wixsite.com slash toxicpop. Email us at toxicpop1 at gmail.com and check us out on Facebook at facebook.com slash toxicpop1 and Instagram at instagram.com slash wearetoxicpop. Links are in the description.